Hello, I'm Atuba Judge, and I'm so excited to be bringing you this broadcast this morning. Praise God. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, I have a special announcement to make, and I want you to listen attentively. On the 1st of May, which is this week, Saturday, a few days from now, we're going to be having a special prayer and fasting meeting. Now, every first of the month, we usually have a 24-hour fast. But there's something unique about this one. Praise God. Normally, we have our meetings on Zoom. See, so we, 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 we gather in a Zoom meeting and then we have this prayer meeting. But then on this particular one for the month of May, this week, Saturday, we're going to be having a Zoom meeting and then an on-site meeting. Praise God. Now, God has blessed us with a facility. So we are going to be meeting there from 9 a.m. till after the 6 p.m. watch. Now we're going to be there from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. We're going to be dealing with the issues of our nation. Praise God. Yeah, I know God has spoken a lot concerning the month of May as regards our nation, Nigeria. And the season for which he has been speaking of has come. And then he is giving us instructions on how to go about it. So we're going to spend time, look into God's wisdom, look into his word, and then we'll spend a great deal of time praying for our nation. Now, those of you who, um, who are not in the city of Abuja, now if you're in the city of Abuja, I would like to invite you. The meeting venue is suite 3009 King Frem Plaza along um, Amadou Bello Expressway, very close to the Banex Bridge if you're coming from uh, next Kashankari. Now, if you're not in the city of Abuja, you can join us via Zoom, but you will need to, um, you will need to contact us and tell us you're interested in the meeting and then we'll send you the Zoom link. And even if you're coming for the meeting, you will need to contact us and let us know you're coming for the meeting. Now, it's a very special and we know sensitive meeting. Praise God. Because we're going to be dealing with deep things. And that's why we're not airing the meeting on via social media. It's just indoor meeting. Only those who we permit to um, meet with us via Zoom will be allowed for the meeting. So if you're interested, send us your information and then we'll get back to you if you're with the link if you're permitted to join the meeting it's a time of prayer so we're not looking for um, people who just want to attend a, a, a meeting listen we are dealing with our nation the kind of prayer that when we are done we will just wait to see the result <laughs> praise god yeah so I just had to put this out there and, and, and sound it so you hear me. Now, if you miss out anything, contact us. We'll give you all this information. But please plan, plan for it. If you love our nation, if you love God, and, and you're one of those that have been praying the will of God for our nation, this is a meeting that you should find yourself in. Praise God. All right. So we've been talking about... Um, angelic assistance and this week you know the lord led me to begin to share on these two aspects that angels are involved see talking jesus speaking in the book of mark mark chapter 13 and verse 27 he said and then he will send his angels and gather together his elect from the four winds from the farthest part of the earth to the farthest part of the heaven angels are the ones that will be given the assignment to gather the elect of god now some people don't understand this angels are involved in all our movement now you remember the children of israel when they came out from the land of egypt god said i'm sending my angel before you and then they will they will give you they will lead you that that angel will lead you 
He will be a pillar of fire by night and a pillar of cloud by day. See, now, say, so how come angels? Yeah, angels do such wonders. Remember Samson, the birth of Samson, how an angel met um, Menoah, met the mother of Samson first and met the husband later. And then when they realized, okay, this is, you know, they, they, they actually felt it was a man of God because they met someone who, they met a man, you understand? They didn't meet someone carrying wings, you know, that's what some people think. And angels carry, no, they don't carry wings, praise God. So they met a man and then they said, oh, they called him, oh, this man of God, okay? So they say, look, what's your name so that uh, we, would, we would honor you when this prophecy comes to pass? And then I said, nah. <laughs> And say, if you want to give any offering, give it to the Lord. And then the Bible says they, they set up an altar. And then as they offered the offering before the Lord, the Bible said the angel went into the offering. He did a wonder in their, in, in their presence. And then went into the smoke of the offering. And from there, he disappeared. Praise God. Yeah. And that's when they knew that, man, this is not a man that they just met. See, you ask yourself this question sometimes. How come angels were so visible then and then now they are no more visible the question who told you that they are no more visible now you know see that's some of the misconception we have even when we study scriptures we look at these scriptures and then we realize we, we begin to think that man i wish things would be like that today as they were in the things we read, we read about the truth is, there is no difference. The thing you read about is the same thing that is happening today. Say, but, but, but we don't see angel. Now you feel, you know, oh, sometimes, and that's a problem with lots and lots of people. Lots of assumptions. You read something in the Bible and you just feel that that's how it was everywhere. You know, every day, everywhere. No, these are accounts. These are accounts. You know, I was talking to someone one time and then we were talking about tithing. And he said to me, but if tithing is important, how come it's not, no, how come it was not in the New Testament? And I, and I, said, and I said to him, I said, I don't understand. What do you mean Titan is not in the New Testament? He said, but it's not recorded in the New Testament. So I said, where is the New Testament? When is the New Testament? He said, eh, the New Testament now, the early church. So the, the New Testament stopped with the early church. Um, you know, the Acts of the Apostles, we should have seen it in Acts of the Apostles. I said, no, no, no. Has the New Testament church ended? Don't you see Titan in the church today? Don't you see, see people teaching and, and giving tithes today. So, how, you, know, you know, sometimes like, like but, 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 no, no. I, I ask you this question. How did African, African believers learn to tithe? Think about it. Who imported tithing into the church, um, church flow and, and, and things like that? Who, who imported it? You think it's Africans that start and say, let's do things our African way. No, sir. When the gospel was delivered, I want you to think. When the gospel was delivered, the titan truth was delivered with it. So, if you say titan was not in the New Testament, who brought them? Who, who are these people that brought it in to us? I, I don't know if you're understanding what I'm saying. So when people say these things, Titan is not in the New Testament. The New Testament that you read, it's, it's a narrow account of the whole activity of the church that was going on. Yeah. What do you mean narrow account? I'll give you an example. The book of Acts was written by one person. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, he, he was a disciple of Apostle Paul. So, he followed Paul for some of these journeys. And most of the things he knows are from Paul's perspective. Are you getting what I'm saying? The same person who looked, wrote the book of Luke is the same person who wrote the book of Acts. So, it was so easy then for him to write you Paul's account. Now, it doesn't mean or it didn't, it didn't mean 
that there were no other things taking place in other ministries, other parts of the nations or the world or even in Jerusalem. It doesn't mean now Jesus left 11 disciples. Remember that. Don't think all of them went to sleep. After, uh, after the resurrection of Jesus or the ascension of Jesus. Don't think they all went to sleep. So where is the account of Bartholomew? Where is the account of you know, Judah? You know, the other, not Judas Iscariot, you know, the other Judah. Where is the account of, of um, all these people? Philip, where Andrew, where is their account? Don't think they all went to sleep. It's because John even said it. Look, if everything is going to be written, the whole world cannot contain the book that shall be written. Just Jesus alone. Now think about it. So sometimes we, we, miss, we miss out when we narrow our mind. We know we think Paul was the only one God anointed. So remember, Barnabas was there. Barnabas was Paul's teacher. Have you forgotten that? He said, what do you mean Barnabas was Paul's teacher? Yes, Barnabas influenced Paul's ministry greatly. So don't, don't think that he was just taking him and leading him to the bread. The fact that Barnabas and Paul separated at one point in time because of John Mark didn't mean Barnabas' ministry ended. No, the reason you don't get, you didn't, we don't have the report of Barnabas' ministry recorded in the book of Acts was because um, Luke was with Paul. Are you getting what I'm saying? So expand your mind and understand something and let the Holy Spirit guide you. So when you talk about the New Testament, the New Testament is still today. There are certain things that the Spirit of God can introduce into the church today. It's part of the New Testament. So you don't bring that argument that um, uh, Titan was not uh, a part of the New Testament. Anyway, we're not talking about Titan today, but I'll just bring in that um, as an example for, for you to widen your view and understand. Now listen, he is sending out his angels, Jesus said. And they are gathering God's elect. Now, now notice something. This is in a Kubo Sopra. He is gathering God's elect from the farthest part of the earth to the farthest part of the heavens. And he's gathering them together. Now, he didn't say he's gathering everybody in the world. He said he's gathering God's elect. So, God knows where his elects are. He knows the one in one John Kramer village in Bayelsa. You see? Oh, he knows the one in, in Karanamuda in, 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 in Katsina State. He knows the one far down Sokoto. He knows the one far down Meduguri to Australia, New Zealand. He knows the elect. They are all over the place. And guess what? I'll tell you something. Why you're here in your local church thinking that is all there is? God is busy teaching his elect. He is teaching them by himself. He's teaching them by himself. We had a series, I think the series we had before this one, you know, we were talking about how the prophecy of, of Jeremiah is being fulfilled. And the prophecy of Joel, God says in that day, no one will say to his neighbor, know the Lord, for they will all know me from the least to the greatest. They will all know me. How will they know? Because the Lord himself is teaching the elect. He is teaching them. He is teaching them. And soon they will begin to rise up. See, that's the gathering taking place now. Soon you, they will begin to rise up. You will begin to notice somebody in Australia is speaking with the same voice somebody in in. India is speaking with. Someone in China is speaking with the same voice. Yeah. You will see these things happen. Because now they don't know themselves. Now, now, you know that's how these things work. We don't know ourselves. I, I was speaking with one of my daughters, you know, recently. And I, I, and we were just talking. And I was like, ah, the, I was, I mean, I'm, I'm amazed at what you're telling me. Because just yesterday I was listening to a message you know, by, by someone else, another preacher of the gospel. And he is saying exactly the same thing you are saying now. In fact, I'm even tempted to ask you if you're listening to him. But I didn't. See, because the Spirit of God is saying the same thing. You see, 
He, he's bringing his thoughts together. He's bringing it together. And, and soon, he, oh, I see so much glory. Hallelujah. There's a gathering taking place. Mm. Mm. And soon, how do we know ourselves? Jesus said to the disciples in John chapter 10, He said, other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. They also I must bring in. And they will become one fold and one shepherd. How is he going to bring them in? He said, they shall hear my voice. That's our mark. We hear his voice. So, so when the Lord begins to speak, we shall hear that voice. And then we shall see the angels pulling us from here and there and gathering us together. And then we'll begin to gather and meet ourselves. We'll suddenly realize that there is an army. Oh, glory, 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 glory. We give you praise, Lord. So let your word be fulfilled in our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.